Hey everyone, Dave DeBow here with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Today, zooming in from a sunny, tropical look in Charleston, South Carolina, we've got Tim Bratz. How are you doing today, Tim? Doing awesome, Dave. Appreciate you having me, man. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you too because you are a young gun who's done some amazing stuff in real estate really fast. So if you guys, if you haven't heard of Tim, Tim focuses on uh, multifamily properties, commercial properties. He's an investor. He's a consultant. Here's a cool thing. 4,000 units, give or take. $300 million portfolio, portfolio, give or take. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Plus, he consults on this stuff. So, Tim, <laughs> let's start with, first of all, kind of big picture. There's a thousand different ways to make a lot of money in real estate. You like mm -hmm. to focus on multifamily properties, if I'm not mistaken. Why that niche? Why do you? Why is that the best bang for your buck? Yeah, well, great question. And um, I, I think a lot of people get involved in real estate for that uh, that allure of passive income and residual income. Uh, but we all think, at least I did when I first got started, that I needed to go stockpile a bunch of my own cash in order to go and invest in those kinds of assets. And, um, and so that's what I ended up doing. I, got, I, I thought that the gradual progression to becoming a real estate investor was get a real estate license, learn how to wholesale, learn how to flip, you know, and I, and I went through this, this process. And then I got into buying and holding smaller single family and smaller multifamily uh, uh, properties and uh, just kind of fell into an apartment building in 2012 um, that was so cheap, I couldn't pass it up. I bought an eight unit apartment building in Cleveland, Ohio, fixed it all up and I was all into it for like, Eighty thousand wow. dollars. So it was really, really cheap. C class area, really tough clientele of uh, of renters. Uh, but I was at such a low basis, it was hard to mess that up. And um, and when I when I bought it and I renovated and I put all the all the tenants in place, and then my idea was then turn around and flip it for you know one hundred fifty two hundred thousand dollars. And if it sold, amazing, I get a great return. But if it didn't sell, I had like a thirty percent cap rate on that property, 30% uh, return on investment. And so um, I loved the, the aspect of, of, I was really bad at flipping houses, you know? So like the retail HGTV kind of stuff that you see, I was not very good at that. I didn't like that it got very emotional I, with the I, buyers. I, I think they might uh, give a little bit their... about their numbers too there, Tim. I, I don't know about you, but <laughs> they I, definitely I, suspect, do. I suspect the numbers might not be quite exactly the way they portray them to be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, they definitely do. And, um, you know, they don't, they don't bring in holding costs and carrying costs and brokers commissions and closing costs and all or, these other things. Or all the stuff they uh, get. Debt service. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is all the expensive stuff, right? So the, uh, um, so anyways, I, 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 I like the idea of flipping properties, but flipping rental properties. So that's why I got heavily into like turnkey single families. And that is when I kind of scaled into uh, the apartment space too. And I like just the scale and uh, of the apartments. I love that you can go to one location instead of 10 locations. I love that you can look at one roof instead of 10 roofs. I look at, I love looking at one foundation instead of 10, raising money from one uh, borrower or lender instead of 10 lenders and negotiating with one seller instead of 10 sellers. So there's, there was more scale to it. Now there's definitely some nuances and some things that I had to learn along the way, but um, you're able to grow that much faster. As you said, I, uh, I picked up about 4,200 units 4,180 units in the past five years, um, which is a lot of growth. But, but I will say I was bad at real estate for about seven years before that. So, so it's not that I was, it's not so that I- uh, for the rest of us. Is that what you're saying? Is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't just get lucky and fall into this. I was really bad and stumbled forward since 2008, 2009, when I first started investing and uh, just kind of got good at it around 2016, 2017 is really when I caught my- um, you know, caught my stride. And then all of a sudden you look like an overnight success. So yeah. um, I think that's a lot of things in life. I think it takes a lot of hard work and there's a lot of uh, things building up under the surface and a plant's got to grow down before it grows up. So um, mm -hmm. well it's still working underneath the surface before it starts sprouting from the earth. Yeah. Before it becomes visible. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very mm -hmm. cool. So you're this, you know, eight, nine year overnight success. <laughs> with, with the whole process going from fumbling around with flips and single family homes, getting into multifamily. So why don't you, because I, I think a lot of people, people can really relate to that. 
Can you kind of walk us through, you know, you told us about you got this eight unit building and that was where the, the light bulb went off. How did things really start to snowball for you after that? How, so let's look at first things first. So finding the deals, like when you go back, cause I know you're at the stage now where you're working on, I'm, I would imagine multiple hundreds of units per, per property kind of thing. But mm -hmm. back when you were getting into the eight plexes, 12 plexes, 60, you know, the smaller multis, how did you find those kind of deals? Yeah, so when I started, started buying apartments, this is 2012. So yeah. everything was listed on the MLS. It was just a different market back then, uh, but it was a lot harder to find money. So I think there's always this dichotomy of it's either easy to raise money and hard to find deals like it has been for the past several years, or it's easy to find deals and hard to find money like it was back in 2010, 11, 12. So it was back then it was easy to find deals, really hard to find money. Um, so you can just jump on the MLS and find, find opportunities all over the place. Today, I, found my I find my deals from uh, really just networking, you know, talking to different people, talking to residential wholesalers and investors and brokers and agents and telling them that I buy apartment buildings. And so I found that a lot of residential people in real estate don't know how to underwrite a commercial deal, but they still come across those opportunities and then they discard them because they don't know what to do with them. So by just being top of mind and letting them know that I'm a buyer, a real buyer of real estate, of apartment buildings, uh, they think, oh, I came across this building. I don't know what to do with it. Maybe I'll call Tim. Maybe I'll send it to Tim's team. And then my team reviews it. We pay either a commission or we kick them some equity in the deal even. And uh, it's a win-win for everybody. So that's how I get a lot of my deals today. Um, if, if I were just getting started today in a new market where I didn't know anybody um, and I, it, you know, and maybe you don't want to go after hundred unit or 200 unit deals because that's a different ball game. Um, I think there's a big opportunity for like 10 to 50 unit apartment buildings though, for people, especially just looking to start scaling out of, out of residential and into multifamily. Um, that's kind of, you know, it's bigger than what a lot of the, the small flippers and, and wholesalers are looking for. Um, and it's, it's, too small for guys like me to come and compete with you. So you can really get in there. And that's, that's and actually what I ended up doing is I ended up building a portfolio of a lot of buildings between 10 to about 60 units. Um, and that got me up to several hundred units, about four or 500 units. And that's when I started taking down portfolios of 200 units and 300 units and 700 units at a time, which has really helped me uh, snowball my growth. Uh, but I started out with being the guy who went out and bought a bunch of 20 unit and 30 unit and 40 unit apartment buildings and just stabilize those. Um, and again, I was small or bigger than the small guys, smaller than the big guys kind of a thing. Kind of spot. had this nice little niche. Yeah. 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 And, and it allowed me to, um, to grow my portfolio kind of under the radar. And then boom, once I had a few hundred units, then I could qualify for a loan on a 200 unit apartment complex, or I can uh, at least have some posture and puff out my chest a little bit when I'm talking to brokers who are listing a 200 unit apartment complex. Right. So it gives you just a little bit more confidence and, um, and respect, I guess, in the community once you have a certain number of units. You got some mojo. Yeah, that makes sense. So <laughs> Tim, you know, I know you do lots of training and coaching with people getting into the space. <laughs> so without giving away all your secret sauce or anything like that, what do you recommend for people that are making that transition, single family, home, multifamily, when it comes to raising money to do those kind of deals? Because most mom and pop real estate investors don't have that kind of money. Again, uh, depends on the area, depends on the price point on the properties they're looking at. We got a lot of Canadians that listen to this. Our price points are stupid compared to what uh, you guys can get stuff for down <laughs> south in a lot of cases. What what what's your recommendation yep. there when it comes to bringing on investor partners or joint venture partners or however you do it and raising capital for your deals? Sure, sure, great question. I think I think you know finding deals. You're hitting on two of the things that I think are the most important in doing deals. One is finding deals. The other is raising capital. And like we said before, there's always this dichotomy. So you always have to be doing both of those at the same time, uh, regardless of how much money you have set aside. I'm still always having conversations with private money lenders, Smart. regardless of how much deal flow I have. I'm still always out marketing and sourcing opportunities. So as far as raising money goes, um, remember how I said earlier, how I went through this natural progression of broker, flipper, wholesaler, you know, turnkey buyer, manager, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And then got into apartments. There's a lot of private money lenders that do the same thing. And a lot of your hard money lenders, 
that are lending money on single family flips, they're like, they kind of tired of the transactional stuff, right? They thought it was going to be more automated. They, they don't like underwriting deals over and over again. And at the end of the day, it's just getting a check and they have to go do it again in order to make another check. So they want to lo- learn how to build wealth as well. So uh, I, I converted a lot of my private money lenders on the, on the uh, single family side. And I said, hey, here's what I'm doing. I'm paying you 12 to 15% annually right now. What if I paid you eight to 10% over here? And so that way you have something safe and steady, but then I'll also kick you a little bit of equity in the deal. Mm, so now cool. you can build wealth. Now you have depreciation, appreciation, refi proceeds, sales proceeds, cash flows, and I get you your money back and you made a good solid return, eight to 10% while it was invested. And you still got some cash flows coming on over here because the equity that you're building up. And then there's more velocity on your money and we can roll it into another deal, another deal, another deal. And uh, by just explaining that, they, they, they didn't look at the, the surface level of the rate of return. They looked at the long-term picture and they realized they can make a lot more money long-term and build wealth and have tax advantages if they invest this way. So I've been able to move a lot of my single family uh, lenders over to uh, uh, the equity investors in my commercial real estate. So that'd be one spot. Another one is I love hanging out with entrepreneurs, uh, specifically entrepreneurs that are not in real estate. They are very good at making money. They are not good at all at saving it and deploying it to make more money. Right. They are they they don't know what to do with it. I've, I can tell you, I, I don't know, pretty much every entrepreneur that I know who uh, made money outside of real estate has has lost a significant portion of it, 30, 40, 50 percent of it because they're trying to do new things and they're not linked up with the right people or they haven't, you know it's like it's almost like starting a new business. you know right. if, if you're really good at e-commerce, let's say. And then all of a sudden you want to get into real estate. If you want to go and operate real estate, I, again, it's, I've been in this for 11, 12 years now and have taken a lot of lumps and learned from the, the school of hard knocks on how to do this stuff the right way. Um, and so a lot of the properties that I buy today are actually from entrepreneurs who made money in another business and then deployed it in real estate on their own oh. without being educated, without uh, joint venturing with somebody who knew that they were doing what they were doing without screening a management company. And they just, you know, they get their legs taken out and then they have to figure out, Hey, I either lose the real estate or I lose my primary business. And they give the real estate away to a guy like me who comes in and knows what the heck I'm doing. Yes. So I think if at the very beginning, if those entrepreneurs would have just linked arms with a guy like you or a guy like me or somebody else who's a great operating partner um, and, and, and create a, a collaborative uh, relationship, I think they could be way farther ahead. So wow. I raise a lot of money from from entrepreneurs there, and um, and then the other the other third one that I would say is turnkey um, single family buyers. Essentially, they're looking for uh, predictable fixed returns. They don't want to do any work, and they still want equity upside. So what I offer is a hybrid of predictable return with equity, without and, it, and being completely passive. Right, they don't have to do any of the work. So. Um, I've been able to convert a lot of my turnkey buyers of single family houses into equity investors as well, just by letting them know that there's just a bigger, better play for them. Smart. So you, you've really parlayed everything you're doing in single family stuff over into the multifamily space by educating people about the big benefits of, of doing this and how they might not mm-hmm. make, you know, especially with your hard money lenders, they might not make that 12% a year they're, they're making loaning your money on flips, but they get to get in here long term. They don't have to be turning that money all over over all the time. Plus, they're getting a chunk of the back end on that as well, which mm-hmm. you know, when you educate them about the multiple profit centers and real estate investing, that's gonna that's gonna juice them up and, and turn their crank. And then those those turnkey people aren't juiced up about a single family home. They're juiced up about what real estate can do for them long term. They don't really mm-hmm. give a crap what that looks like. And the less the more hands-free they are, the better. So it would just make sense partnering with a, an active partner like yourself. Yeah. Yep. Smart. Very, very, very smart. Awesome, Tim. Well, time, time definitely flies when we're having fun here, my <laughs> friend. I told you it would. And uh, I know you've got you've got a lot of experience doing deals. You also help people get into this whole space of transitioning from single family homes into multi the multifamily space. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and how people could find out more about you. 
I appreciate that. I mean, just connect with me on social media. Uh, uh, I'm real active on Facebook. Uh, I answer all my own messages. So send me a message on either Facebook or Instagram. Um, I do have some coaching uh, for anybody. It's not, not entry level. It's not beginner. This is like for people who are already doing real estate and they're looking to just scale up into more long-term holds and really building that legacy wealth um, through, through apartments and, and commercial real estate. So it's called commercial empire. And I, you know, I, I do an event and it just kind of fell in my lap. People started hitting me up and on, on Facebook actually saying, do you coach, do you mentor, do you consult? And uh, so I decided to put this event together four times a year and people come out that are great operators and they, they say, Hey, now I learned the, uh, what I'm doing, but we also partner with a lot of our, our students. So we'll bring capital, we'll sponsor the loans. Um, so that way they can bring, they can do the work. We can bring the money. And all of a sudden we can both get into deals that we couldn't have gotten into without the previous relationship. And, um, and then there's other people who come out who have money and they're like, wow, this is a lot of work. I don't want to do that. How about I just deploy my money with you or I have access to capital that I can invest with you. And uh, so it's a really cool community of, of uh, individuals and entrepreneurs that we built uh, where there's a lot of deal flow going around um, in the works. So uh, a lot of opportunities to get in, into and, um, uh, and partnerships to, to joint venture with and uh, wealth to build. So uh, yeah, it's commercial empire. And, uh, but you just, you know, follow me on or connect with me on Facebook or, or LinkedIn uh, or Instagram. And uh, I'll get you more details on that. Just shoot me a message. So I appreciate awesome. that, Dave. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you very much, Tim. Congratulations on all, of you, all you've accomplished in this, you know, 12 year overnight success thing that you got going on. That's awesome. <laughs> my friend. And, and, uh, keep enjoying the sunshine in your neck of the woods. It's rain. Today it's rainy, miserable and very folly here in British Columbia. <laughs> but uh you're making me jealous. You got to come down to visit, man. There you go. I will. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. Take care, everybody. Take care, Dave. Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning into the Property Profits Podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book, right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.